Hello everyone, Pastor Mike Coforio here and welcome to this Restoration Church online experience. I hope you've been blessed by our series, Led by the Spirit. Here's another installment. We're going to be hearing about the waters rising. Check it out. Come on, let's turn to our Bibles. Ezekiel 47. The waters, everybody say, the waters are rising. Put your hand over your heart. The waters are rising. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47. I have it on the screen because I know it's going to take a minute before to, for you guys to find it. Pastor Josiah, can we turn these front lights on for me, please? Thank you. Ezekiel 47, verses 1 through 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to Restoration Church. Come on. I want to welcome Pastor and Dr. Miller from Shekinah Family Worship Center. They have several people from their church visiting this morning. If you are here today, welcome, welcome, Cindy. Thank you. So good to see you. She works with my wife at the village. And uh, so thank you so much for coming. God bless you. you, you and your kids are downstairs. Her first time, she, she was like, I'm bringing my kids downstairs. <laughs> and uh, we have an amazing kids program. So it's good to see you, Cindy. Ezekiel 47, and the word of the Lord reads, The man who was an angel brought me back. To the entrance of the temple, and I saw water. Everybody say, I see water. Now, if you have the King James, the King James says there were many waters. Plural, which means it's still one source, but different streams coming at you from different directions. Somebody say, I feel that. <laughs> one source, but different directions. Sign me up. So, I refer to the King James because the King James is really close to the original Hebrew. One source, several different courses. May every compartment and department of your life feel the rush of this water. There were many waters coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and, this is important, I have these phrases underlined which we see it four different times let me around the outside it's four times in this passage of scripture where it shows Ezekiel was led he led me around the outside of the outer gate facing east and the water was trickling down from the south side so we got to start somewhere your starting point is not your stopping point some of you are like God I want more and God's like I want more I want more so these prayer, oh God, I want more from you, is really theologically not um, a theolog theologically correct prayer because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and we have all we have of the Holy Spirit right now. So it begins with a trickle. And verse 3, as a man went eastward with the measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, which is about 1,500 feet, and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another 1,500 feet and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another 1,000 and led me through water that was up to the waist. Lord, I pray that you would cause our hearts and prompt our hearts to be led by your spirit. Man, we are led. We hear a lot of voices. Don't raise your hand, but it's true. We hear all kinds of voices. Lord, may we be driven and led by the voice of the Spirit of God. Verse 5. He measured off another 1,500 feet, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A river that no one can cross. Then he asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. So that's one, two, three, four five times when I arrived there I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river he said to me the f water flows from the east region and goes down into the Arabah where it enters the Dead Sea Mary Earl where are you you have swam in the Dead Sea if you ever went to Israel you swam in the Dead Sea it's called the Dead Sea because everything there's nothing in there and you completely float and you don't want it in your mouth or your eyes. The salty water there becomes fresh. The King James says the waters will be healed. 
Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because the water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything there will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from the Engedi to and en Glime. There will be places for spreading nets. Couldn't do that before. Before it was just a big struggle. Now it's like, let's everywhere you go, let's spread our nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But there's always going to be somebody. There's always going to be someone who's left out. And God is not the one leaving them out. It says, but the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, <clears throat> nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Father, thank you for your word. May it find a place in our heart to be planted deep. Thank you for that your word is going to be released prophetically into the dark crevices and the dark parts of our heart. And there's going to be freedom. There's going to be restoration. There's going to be revival. There's going to be renewal. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. The book of Ezekiel. Incredibly, thank you, Andy. Com incredibly complex. Probably one of the most complex books in the Bible. You ever read something and you go, huh? That happens to me. And you could either go, huh, and then put the Bible down. Or you go, huh, and then go uh, join a small group and take momentum with Pastor Mike. But this, is, this vision that we just read by the prophet is deep, intense, but really it's very symbolic. This is not a literal event that is happening in the present moment in this book because it speaks of a river through Jerusalem. There is not one river in Jerusalem. It speaks of a temple in Jerusalem. There is not one temple in Jerusalem. All there is is a Kidron Brook that used to be a brook, but it's now called a valley because it's the, the area is so dry and arid. But this is a literal event that hasn't taken place yet. For those of you who are end time scholars, there's the rapture, there's the battle of Armageddon, and then there's the millennial reign of Christ that God is then restoring all of his promises towards the nation of Israel, and this is it right here. I know some people say Israel is God's favorite people. Not if you're living in the New Testament. We're all God's favorite people. The only problem with the nation of Israel is they got to catch up. God has to make do on his promises that he gave them for over 4,000 years ago, and God is saying, we still got to make do. So even though Israel doing their own thing God's like I'm still pursuing you and I got to make do on my promises so this here this season is where all the promises given to the nation of Israel will be fulfilled it is a literal event but it is also a symbolic event it's a vision anytime we talk about water we're talking about whom the Holy Spirit the work and the ministry of the Spirit so this vision that Ezekiel has is layered with so many meetings and symbolic gestures for us today. Like we said, there's no river, there's no temple, but there is a river. And there is a temple very much alive today. Because Jesus said in John chapter 7 verse 38, whoever believes in me as scripture has said. What scripture is he talking about? Old Testament. Rivers of living water will flow from within them. Come on now. This is why if you can capture a covenant, it changes the way you walk. It changes the way you live. It changes your very power. It changes the way you get up. Hello. When you understand that all of heaven is stored up. Heaven was downsized into a womb of a teenage girl and now Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. So this river is inside of you. And I want you to hear what the Lord is saying today. Everybody say, Pastor, preach. Pastor, preach. Thank you for giving me permission. Amen. This is now a, a, a vision that Ezekiel has 
a chosen prophet of God who was known to give visions to the nation of Israel, who was in this season of exile. They were in Babylonian captivity again. <laughs> you ever face the same issue again? I thought I was free from that. Stop praying against the issue. Your next breakthrough is not being delivered. Your next, ish, your next breakthrough is discipline. Your next breakthrough is not deliverance. Your next breakthrough is obedience. So this is, they were in this place again. Again and again and again. Give a counsel. Don't raise your hand or look at them now. Do you have a counsel somebody? Again? You're in Babylonian captivity? Again? Yes. And God uses Ezekiel to bring hope and restoration to his people by letting them know one day if which is a conditional word mentioned 2,000 times in the whole Bible. If you follow me, you'll find freedom. Which means if you don't follow me, you'll find other things, but it won't be freedom. So let's break this up into an understandable landscape. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. The passage opens up by describing the waters. I love this in the King James waters, which means it's not just coming from one direction. It's coming from different directions. May we live in such a way where the favor of the Lord, we're like, wow, wow, God, thank you. Whoa, where you have to say, God, time out on your favor. I have, I, my buckets are too small. Then he's saying, Corinthians, he says, I'm going to increase your storage. Come on, okay, some of you are not saying amen. Don't make me amen myself, please, because this blessed me, and I hope it blesses you, whatever. But uh, he says, I'm going to bring things your way that you're going to have to get a new storage barn. And guess what? He says, I'm going to not stop the blessing, but I'm going to increase your storage so that you can hold what I'm about to send. So the waters are coming from different directions. Let the only thing that overwhelms me is how good God is. So we're, this is the landscape. And this man, this angel, is the same one referred to in Ezekiel chapter 43. And we have to get this now. Ezekiel has another vision, several verses, chapters before, where he talks about the glory of the Lord returns to the temple. So in order for the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the contextual history is this. The waters flow from the temple, but the glory has to first flow into the temple. My glory will first return to the, I'm not talking about a building. Come on, somebody under, I'm talking about this right here. The glory of the Lord must first hit this before the waters begin to flow and have a free reign. And this was a dark time. There was upheaval. There was government corruption. There was financial darkness. There was every political unrest. Thank God we're not having that now, huh? All of these things are happening, and guess what? God doesn't call on politics. He doesn't call on the government. He doesn't call on special interest groups. He doesn't call on politicians. He calls on the temple. The water came from the temple. It did not come from government. This is important that we get this in our spirit. Before the water, Lord, I want more of you. And God is echoing back, I actually want more of you. What did John say? May I decrease so that you can increase. Increase. We have all of God as we need. This passage teaches us that God moves on the church, renewing us in order to use us as a source of hope for the world. He renews us in order to use us to, as a source of hope for the world. So he doesn't renew you for you. He renews you for the world. Stop thinking this, that, that this is God. I'm so much in pain. Well, forget your pain and look for the revelation of what the Lord is wanting to teach. And this water, the waters, gives us the impression that there's just a pattern of increase. Think about that for a minute. Some of you have been praying that you be able to pay your bills, and that's the wrong prayer. Because Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to be able to pay your electric bill. Somebody say, oh, snap. Thank you, Jesus. Electric is high. Uh, stop glorifying. Did you hear the electric rates are going up? Stop glorifying things that don't line up with covenant. And when I'm saying glorify, you know, this whole thing is, oh, my left nostril stuffy. Let me go get tested. I don't have COVID, but I have the flu. Stay away from me. I got to take off from work for three and a half weeks now. We glorify things that don't celebrate covenant. 
Stop running for testing for everything and walk in the spirit and the anointing of the Lord. Now somebody's going to walk up and say, say, pastor's against testing. That's not what I said. I love it when people just take one little thing out and go. The waters have a pattern of increase. What's increasing in your life right now? I don't have to leave anything behind. I gotta leave, oh, 2022, I got to leave these things. I don't have to leave anything behind. I'm taking it with me because I'm taking the blessings of God. In fact, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. And the same blessings that followed me in 2022 is going to increase in 2020. I don't have to prophesy it or make a New Year's resolution or journal or write it down or pray for it. It's happening. The more it flowed, the more it increased in effect and in size. The more it flows, the more it increases. This is it. The flowing river of the Holy Spirit. Reflect on that power. Where are you now at your spiritual level? Because some people just... In that mindset now, we're reading in verse 3. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a 1,500 feet and then led me through water. That was ankle deep. How much of your, what does it mean to be led by the Spirit? Well, the same thing it means to be led by everything else that we're led by. Like what are you dominated by your first 30 seconds of I'm waking up? That's all. That's all. Oh, what does it mean to be led by the Spirit? I'm going to tell you now. The same way you're led and driven, you read the news. I can't sleep at 1230 at night. I'm going to read the news. See what's going on in Russia. <laughs> now I laid me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. In Jesus' name. What are you led by? What's your initial prompting Fact is, so when you sleep, your brain waves, your brain is, is regenerated, right? And we always learn, Dr. Mike, we always learn back in the 70s, 80s, that once your brain is a certain way, it, that's it, you're that for life. But as you sleep, a neurogenesis takes place and you, you have these new baby brain cells that develop. And that's why lamentation says early in the morning. So when you wake up, you might feel physically tired, but guess what's alert and alive? The very thing, God don't speak to your body. He speaks to your heart and soul and your mind. And that's the thing that's fresh. You, you are at your freshest before you have that first cup of coffee. Because this is how God. And so the angel here leads Ezekiel. Have you reached a level of spiritual maturity and obedience to God's word where you feel a constant leading? A constant flowing, a constant moving, a constant thinking about the ways of the Lord, a constant thinking about his scripture, about his word, about his principles, about what, what you uh, was it Colossians chapter 3 says, fix your mind on things above, set your mind on things above, cement your minds on things that are valuable to the Lord. So this first step, verse 3, first step is not the final step. Some of you have made this your final step, and that's why you're living in frustration. This is not your final step. This is your first step. And that's why these are the kinds of folks that are very difficult to pastor. Should I go there? (laughs) I was hoping you'd say yes, and I will. I'm the pastor of Restoration Church of Rhode Island. You may see me at Home Depot go, oh, you're my pastor. Doesn't mean I'm your shepherd. Yes, thank you. I'm just looking for a little bit of encouragement because it's a little scary here. I'm holding on here. I pastor this church. In order for me to be classified as your shepherd, that means you follow the great shepherd. The great commission. So these people, there are people, believe it or not, not here that are unshepherdable. Is that a word? Because they are there. For you beach people, you're way out and there's just always somebody that's just like, I'm happy here. Why do you have your bathing suit? Why why do you have your bathing suit on if you're just going to stay in water that is ankle deep? These are the kinds of people that say... I, I'm just getting my feet wet. These are the people, because they are on the outer courts, but they want holy of holies benefits. Don't get mad. Don't look at me like that. 
I can give you the same look back. <laughs> Out of court, uh, you know, and, and you have your bathing suit on, but, but yet you see everybody having fun in the Holy of Holies. They're just like you. Their story is different. We're all the body of Christ. This is the first step, not the final step. And some have made this their final step. And this is the term, I'm just getting my feet wet. This is just the beginning. If you are at this level, there's more. Everybody say there's more. There is absolutely more. And as God moves on you and stretches you, after a while, having your ankles to the, just the water to the ankles becomes natural. And you begin saying, let me move in a little closer. And if you want to learn how to move in a little closer, just hang out with somebody who's closer than you. And do what they do. And wake up in the morning the same time they wake up in the morning. First thing you should ask them. If you say, you know what, I want, I, want to, I want to get a little closer like them. Ask them, what time do you get up in the morning? Ask them, how many times do you press your snooze button? All right. Angelo. These are the folks now. I want to encourage you. He orders, the Bible says he orders your steps. He orders your steps, but he orders your steps based on a heart that is led. My feet will go where my heart is led to. How many times have you been at a place when you before you were saved, and you're like, "How did I get here?" Well, your heart was there before your feet arrived. And so he orders your steps. That means there's a return address. So when you're about to make a wrong decision, guess what? Come back to me with that return address. He orders your steps. And if you allow your heart to stop being led, your feet will go nowhere. God is always doing something. Always doing something. And if it appears as if he stopped, he didn't stop. You stopped. And he's calling you out. Son, he's calling you out. Daughter, the water is great. Be led by the Spirit. Get off the couch. Get off the bench. Stop being a bystander. Stop being an onlooker. Stop standing by. You're missing the action. The supernatural hand of God wants to release something in your life. And your feet are the only thing that is wet. This is what he says. There's more. Verse 4. He measured off another 1,500 feet. And again, led me through water. God, may I wake up, Lord, as I'm waking up today, Father, may my heart be led by your spirit. There's nothing mystical. There's nothing like where you feel, oh, this is magic. Okay, nothing like that. You live what's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart that you live, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So he led me. And so we begin to sense his leading, hear his promptings, and sense that God is with us. And now we find ourselves in knee-high waters. This is great. Excellent. I'm proud of you. This is, this is, growth is necessary for this to work. This is where you learn the art of prayer. (laughs) This is it. And this is also the point where you see people run back to where they were ankle deep. For you beach people, it's, oh, the water is always great. Even when it's 45 degrees, the water, just jump in. The water is great. No. I remember when we lived in Ohio, our son Danny was probably about four or five years old, and we were at Charles, Charles Mill Lake. I remember that lake. We went there all the time. Ohio didn't have oceans, but they had lakes. And so we, we were out, my, my, my wife, myself, her brother and his wife were out deep in the lake. And uh, um, we're just kind of hanging out, chilling. And then my son, who's four years old, is like, has his feet in the water, you know. And, and, and he's like, when he was four, he walked like this. And so, and so I look, I say, Steve, Sue, look at Danny. He looks so cute, right? I'm like, hey, Danny, come on. The water is great. Come on. He's four years old. Danny, come on. We're laughing. Look at him. He's so cute. Danny, come on. The water is great. Guess what he starts doing? I'm like, <laughs> Danny, stop. <laughs> Danny, stop. So I'm doing my Olympic backstroke because <laughs> I swim the fastest that way. I don't know why. I'm from Brooklyn. We didn't have pools in Brooklyn. 
I learned how to swim on a, a, when we went on a honeymoon. I'm like, I don't know how to swim. So I'm doing the Olympic backstroke to my son. And he's, I'm trying to capture him because the water is doing this. And just about when the water gets to this point, I, I grab him. And I'm like, Danny, what were you thinking? I, why'd you do that? He said, you called me. You don't know any better. You don't see danger. You just see dad calling you. So I was like, okay. <laughs> like, what do you, what, what are you waiting for? You want me to ask the question again? I will. So we're up to the waist, right? And so when you're up to the waist, after a while, for you beach people, it's like, it's kind of less weight you're carrying. Because I can carry, my legs can carry 225 pounds. You can carry a lot more. How do I know? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> How do I know? Because I'm carrying 225 pounds right now. But when you're in the water, you carry less. When you're up to your waist, a little bit more buoyant. Because ask Noah in the ark. ark floated. Ask Moses in the ark. His little baby basket floated. Why? Because when you're living in hope and living in faith and living in blessing and the favor of the Lord, you don't have to carry things. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I'm going to ask this side. What are you waiting for? There's nothing, absolutely nothing else that God has to do in order for you to do what you have to do. Ankle high. Knee high. Then he takes verse 4. This is it. He measured off another 1,500 feet and leads me through water that is up to the waist. This is it now. The belt of truth. Gird up your loins. This, this is it right here. The strength of the Lord. There's, this is the point in time in your walk with Jesus where you spend more time looking forward than you do backward. Someone here is looking back too much. Windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. You are looking, you, you leave regrets behind. The only thing that past sins and mistakes have to do with the right now is a testimony. There's a point in your time in your walk with God where you have to begin looking forward and then you stop looking backward. This is what Paul says in Philippians 3. Brethren and sisters, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this, I do one thing. There's a lot of stuff that I haven't mastered, but this one thing I do, forgetting things which are behind and reaching forward unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. When you're ankle deep and when you're knee deep, man, you're always looking back. Just like the Egyptians when Moses was, they were like, man. And sometimes, we, there are times when you're not rooted in covenant, it appears as if you struggled less. When you were addiction, when you were living in your addiction. I didn't struggle like this. Well, because you're in a place you're not supposed to be in. God is calling you. God is calling you deeper. The waste is very symbolic. This is where you gain an understanding of truth, of, of freedom. And this is how he sets you free with the power of the Spirit of God. You have picked the ability to be alert. And waste deep water is very dynamic, but there's more. Verse 5 says this. He measured off another thousand cubits another distance <laughs> I love that I'm just noticing this now it was always a thousand a thousand a thousand now it's like it's starting to get tough to measure count your blessings yeah I can't immeasurable he's able to do above and beyond what we could ask think or imagine according to the power that is at work in you they start he kind of like oh you said it a thousand cubits each time. How much was it this time? I don't know. It was just another distance. 
And now it was a river I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A water that no one could cross. So the water became so torrential that even the measurer stopped measuring. May it be in every area of your life, name it all, family, finances, work, health, mental health, relationships with your children, your marriage. May you go, wow, the grace of God is on that. Grace of God on this. God, thank you for your grace. God, thank you. Wow. This, wow, God, I made this much, but I was able to cover all my bills. I, I can't explain it. We stopped measuring after a while. Come on. Lord, may 2023 be too tough. Throw away your measuring tapes. Because sometimes God just, you know, sometimes there's more months than money, but let God reverse it where there's more money than month. In Jesus' name. This is where, I want to explain something to you. For those of you who are at ankle high water and you see people enjoying themselves in the front, well, that's just not me. See, this is where you have it wrong. See, now if you're making it about you, you're into idol worship then. Anything you put before God is an idol. You. You took a personality test and it says that you're an introvert. <laughs> you went to the Chinese restaurant and it says you're a frog. <laughs> I just said a side note. Tarot cards. Somebody here in the house just went to have their tarot cards read as an end of the year gift. I deserve this. 2022 was a tough year for me. I deserve this. And you had tarot cards read. God, God, I pray in Jesus' name that God breaks off that stronghold off of you. You've opened up, you've opened up a door that needs to be closed. You opened something that needs to be shut, man. In Jesus' name, cut that nonsense out. Horoscopes and frogs and this. Cut all of that out. Be led by the Spirit of God. He wants to lead you to greater waters where you come to a point in your life where it's tough to look back. The only time you look back is to say, God, thank you for your grace on my finances. Thank you, Father, for promotions. Hello. Anybody need a promotion? Two people. That's great. You complain more rather than believing more for a promotion. Multiple, one source multiple courses war tours that will travel into every or any area that it needs to go healing his the he, i see a healing river going into the dark crevices of your family come on felicia come on you have a testimony sister about god restoring your children restoring your marriage restoring your home and we pray for it and when it happens we're like i can't believe it this prayer, Pastor Sandra, this prayer stuff really works. So this is the place where you learn to depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is the place where it takes more work to go back than it goes to go forward. Oh, no, I don't want to go back. Sometimes he'll just have to read that, recalculate your route, and that's okay. He'll re recalculate you with his grace and his love and compassion. And when Ezekiel got into this deep, his will was surrendered to the will of the river. I'm not saying you become a robot because <laughs> you are still led. But when you are led by the Spirit, Paul says, keep in step with the Spirit. It's not complex. It's not difficult. You actually kind of have fun in a scary kind of way. Sometimes, I don't know, not sometimes, all the time, we make these decisions. My wife and I were like, you know what? It doesn't make sense, Pastor Miller, but we feel led by the Lord. Let's do it. What did he say to Joshua? Wherever you place your, and that was Old Testament, wherever you place your, or if you're in Brooklyn, Wherever you place your foots will be blessed. 
He says, I've allowed the boundary lines to fall pleasantly around you. And he said, and you know what that means? Whatever decision you make will be blessed. Why? When your heart is led, your feet, when your heart is led by the Spirit, your feet will go where your heart is led to. This is it now. Multiple sources where it's too much to swim, where all we talk about is like, man, thank you for your grace, brushing your teeth. Thank you for your grace, drinking your coffee. Thank you for your grace, driving in the car. Thank you for your grace at your workplace. This is it. He was, he was willing to go. He was going where the river took him. And God wants to lose us to lose sight of our own complex, ornate plans and, and goals and ambitions and dreams and just surrender all of that to the Lord. We're not giving up our dreams. We're giving our dreams to Him. Lord, I want to be at a place where it's impossible, impossible to measure. Well, how much did God bless you? I'm still trying to calculate it. I asked for this, and God gave me this. There's more. Stop praying for an electric bill to be paid. That's an insult to covenant. Begin walking in the authority and the blessing of God. You see, once you have this authority, you walk in His blessing now. You see, this river is not some disconnected process, disconnected from New Testament believers. This temple, not disconnected. Guess who's the temple? Guess where the river is coming from? So that's why everywhere we go, be in contact with local unsaved business members and this is why jeremiah says oh stop praying for deliverance i put you there in babylon again i put you there to make an impact for i know the plans that i have for you says the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you i will bless you begin to operate in the leadership of the towns take up positions run for politics everywhere you go guess where that river is coming from who's a temple what's the river the power of the Holy Spirit is operating in you wherever you go. So it's not just praying for something that will impact your address. This is praying for something that impact the world. Consider Hannah. Prayed for a son. Nothing happened. Prayed for a prophet. Something happened. You think you're praying prayers. If you're in ankle deep water, guess what your prayer is going to sound like? God, help me, bless me, please, please, please. Because you pray for the electric bill. He pays your electric bill. And then guess what happens next month? Oh, God, please, 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 please. And God, with his eyes closed, hands tied behind the back, he just blesses you. He's like, no problem. You want to live within the re revelation of rescue? That's fine, but I have something deeper. You don't need as much rescue when you're in ankle-deep water. You don't need any help. Seems you have everything under control, and that's why it's a mess. Time to surrender control you'll never have. This is it now. Verse 8. I love this part. It touches everything. The Dead Sea becomes like the Mediterranean Sea. Everything around you begins to, I'm going to say this word. I know some of you have a problem with it. Everything around you begins to prosper. So if he said to Joshua, everywhere you go, I will bless. In the Old Testament, Joshua didn't have a Savior that died for him. You don't have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of him. We live in a greater covenant. So if he said that to Joshua, what does that mean for us? There's more. We live in a greater covenant. So in the, in the, in the verse 8, it says, the Dead Sea became healed. And I pull that out because that word healed in the Hebrew, which is Rafa, means God, the healer of men. He's using a phrase that belongs to bodies and using it on a phrase, on a, on, on, on a sea that is absolutely dead. So that's why God gave you an immune system. God has a supernatural hand on your life. The waters were healed, and all of a sudden, fish began to appear in large numbers. <clears throat> and it had a miraculous effect on fruit trees. Verse 12 says, every month they will bear fruit. I don't know of any tree that bears fruit for 12 months. 
See, things, I'm going to say this. Things will begin to happen in your life that's not supposed to happen. And you know what? You didn't even pray for it. Because, man, God always outshines your prayers. You set up your best prayer and God outmatches it. Why? Because that's what covenant does. God begins to do things that you're like, did we, pr did we, did we pray for that? No, we didn't. But he says, you will live in houses that you, will not, that you did not build. You will reap from vineyards you did not plant. You will, you will harvest what you did not seed in the name of Jesus. This is the blessing. Things will begin to happen in your life that not trees growing in Jerusalem. Not supposed to happen. Trees blossoming fruit for 12 months a year. Not supposed to happen. May things happen in your life that's not supposed to happen. Come on, let's track it. January 1st. So far I'm having a good year. How about you? May things happen in your life that's not supposed to happen. May things grow in your life because it's, it's just not. I'm not supposed to have this job because I didn't have this degree. And that resume and my GPA and that was a mess. But I, put, I got put into a place. It wasn't your resume. It wasn't your GPA. It wasn't knock on wood it was a favor and the blessing of God on your life surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life may things happen in your life that's not supposed to happen it's just not supposed to happen 12 months out of the year you are enjoying 12 months God it's just getting to be too much time out Mike, help me carry the blessings of God. <laughs> but the swamps, it's always somebody. The swamps and marshes didn't change. Still stubborn. Still stinks. They're all just a waste of, you can't even build on this property. It'll just be on the side. It's part of what you purchased, but you can't even build on it. You can't even claim it, and when you sell it, you can't point to that area. It says, they didn't change. They would just remain. Don't, don't, this part prophetically, don't let this part prophetically speak to this body. Let the part where God sends the Holy Spirit to refresh us, to revive us, to give us life. And I've given you life and eternal life and abundant life that you will live in the blessings and the favor of God and things will happen in your life that's not supposed to happen. Say that God sent things my way. That's not supposed to happen. There's no plan. There's no measure. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. There's no explanation. I can't even get it. I can take the most advanced calculus calculator and still not measure up what God is sending into my life. But you say God did that. I don't know. Did you pray that, honey? Nope. Okay, God did that. Angelo, did you pray that? Oh, God did that. Pastor Mike, I don't ever remember asking the Lord for doing that, but he did it. He grants the desires of your heart. Let's stand. Let's sing this song, Haley.